go in the third quarter. Here comes the rush. Giles under pressure, stepping up, and he is dropped. It's a flag down. Odell Willis will get credit for the sack, and that is his league-leading 11th of the year. And, of course, that's a big part of the Winnipeg attack. But this evening, the Bombers have been relatively quiet holding when it comes to sack in the quarterback. Penalties decline. Third down. They'll bring up third down. That's the first sack of the night for the Bombers. They came into the game with 35 on the year. Yeah, Odell Willis is going to be locked up with keeping here, and he just kind of grabs him across his face, and Odell falls to the ground, and then next thing you know, Odell's got Stephen Giles in his lap. And he a double team. 11th sack of the season. Well, he did beat the double team. He looked confident, looked at keeping. So, Keeping, what are you doing, man? You're choking. Let him go. Good return by Javon Johnson after a great kick by Noel Prefontaine. A 52-yard putt. Good field position for the Bombers when we come back. Team different Winnipeg Blue Bombers have sacked the quarterback this year. I'm, hey, I'm, 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 I'm not going to lie to you, Gordon. When I watched the pregame and started this doubleheader today, I saw the piece on, Od on Odell Willis and his mother, Trish, I believe her name was, and well, tears were rolling down my cheeks watching that. I am so, so inspired by that, and I know that that young man is. Drives her every day to be in the moment, get everything out of himself that he possibly can and overcome adversity, and Odell Willis is living proof, doing it well. Last three years, leading the league in sacks. Alex Brink to Clarence Denmark for a gain of 11 yards there and a, another Winnipeg first down. Paul LaPolice impressed by the way his quarterback moved the team at the end of the first half. And now Brink going over the top. All kinds of interference down there. Corey Watson was tied up by Jeremy Unerdle. That's a mismatch in coverage. And that's going to be a pass interference call against Toronto. Well, that's a matchup you're really licking your chops and you're just like giving the ball to your quarterback. Run number 37, automatic first down. You want to exploit that. Nothing against Jeremy Unerdle. He's playing for younger right now. And this is a matchup you want. You got a linebacker on a, on a slot receiver or a wide receiver, a guy that's very versatile. Saw a 92-yarder by him last week, and Unerdle's doing everything he can to hang on and keep up with him, and he's caught for it. 32-yard penalty gives Winnipeg a first down at the Toronto 13-yard line. Brink throws it out. And it's complete to Watson, and Watson gets down to the 13-yard line. You nerdle there as part of the tackling group for Toronto. And Corey Watson. Having a tremendous season coming in tonight, just needed 74 yards to reach a thousand. He's had two 100 yard games back to back in the last couple of weeks. The only two of his career. So a gain of one, second and nine for the Bomber. Alex Brink has thrown two touchdown passes this year. Picked off already once in the game. Brink down to the goal line, complete. And Terrence Edwards has it very close to Winnipeg first down. Edwards having a quiet evening, but that's kind of his M.O. 39 catches on the year coming in, eight for touchdowns. Absolutely, the guy produces one every five catches going in the end zone. It's amazing. Just watch him. 82 right here. Georgia product coming off. You know, really just kind of sitting down. Could have run a speed cut there, and nobody's on him. Finds a soft spot. It's called a four route. Most pattern trees, route trees that are implemented in professional football. So, a gain of about nine yards. And it'll leave Winnipeg a yard short of a first down, and the big team comes on for the Bombers. Big team, you mean extra bodies, extra big bodies. And uh, that's certainly the case here. As Dorian Smith comes in, adds 300 pounds to the mix. Kashama comes in, number 56, is defensive rush in. He goes about 245, which is interesting because to me that's a little light in the backside, if you know what I mean. Focusing on him on the left side. In man line of scrimmage. So 
the third and the yard from the five yard line. Brink goes straight ahead on second effort. Should have the Winnipeg first down. And I see why he's in there. Kashama, number 56, standing right up there with his numbers back to you, right in the middle of that pile. I see why he's in there. You watch his play, watch the quickness. He's a rush hand, so you would think that he gets off, you know, with timing, with the ball being snapped. And he comes off like a shot out of the cannon and gets in the second level and cuts a linebacker's legs out from underneath him. That's why he's in this situation. Watch him. He's right here in the end of the line of scrimmage. Watch how quickly he gets off. Watch how low he goes. Bang. Right there, cuts out the legs of the linebacker, and that enables your quarterback. Or did it? I guess they got stopped. They have spotted the ball short of the four-yard line, and they're saying that they did not make it. The gamble fails, so Brink stopped on the initial rush, and it's a turnover on downs as the Argos take over. That's a big miscue. You got to have that. You got to figure well, with the yard barrier, neutral zone. I wonder if Black Police it. will challenge the spot. He can on third down. Needed the four. And appeared to get it on the second try. However, it's a turnover on downs, and Giles takes over. Giles on the play fake, and he's in trouble early. And brought down quickly by Merrill Johnson. And Giles lucky to get back to the original line of scrimmage. Well played by the Winnipeg defense. Second level's got contained on Giles now, which is smart. And Odell Willis is shaken up. That's not good. Buck Pierce out of the game, Fred Reed out of the game, and now the CFL sack leader is hurt. But Willis is getting up. He's holding that left shoulder. Looks like he got a stinger in that left shoulder. He's trying to shake it out. Oh, yeah. Watch him. He wraps up Boyd. Knows he doesn't have the football. Crawls back to the ball. Takes one right in the shoulder. To shake that out. He'll be all right. Second and long for Toronto in the shadow of its goalpost. Flags are down, and Giles is down in the end zone. That'll be a safety if the flag is against Toronto. Now, one of Toronto's receivers appeared to release early, but did the Bombers jump as well? Huge call here. That's that's unfortunate for offside. Winnipeg number 56, five yard oh. penalty. It remains second down. So Fernand Kashama is offside. It negates the safety and makes it second down and four for the Argos. Yeah, there that, you see it. That quickness that we showed you on the short yardage situation, which enables him to get to the linebacker, cost him on that one. But that play goes nowhere for Corey Boyd. And look who makes the stop. Kashama answers with the tackle. And it will bring on the punting unit for Toronto. Yeah, you just watch a guy in, in for several plays. And I've been watching Kashama here. And an unlikely situation, short yardage. He did his job, cut the feet out from running the linebacker, didn't allow penetration. Then we watch there, jumps off sides. You know, just being a little overzealous in there, he gets the ball carrier for a loss, and he got to be impressed with how he's playing right now. Eighth part of the game for Noel Prefontaine. It's a good one that chases Johnson back to his 50-yard line. Javon Johnson looking for the corner, but he was being held up there. But a good special teams play by Brian Crawford. Flags are down. A 47-yard punt for Noel Prefontaine. Their team by far more a holding call there moves them back after a great special teams play by Toronto's Brian Crawford so the Bombers will start at their own 38 yard line down a point and the give goes to Foley slashing off tackles Carl Foley across midfield and a flag comes down at the end of the play as he gets down to the Toronto 54 yard line a pickup of 17 yards. You watch Brian Crawford here, seventh year player out of Queens University. This is how he makes his living, running down crazy special teams, trying to keep everything in front of him. Just can't make the tackle, gets up, gets a piece of it. Listen, I, I, I know a friend of his. And Unnecessary roughness. 
Horse collar tackle, Toronto number 21, 15-yard penalty. So Lynn J. Shell penalized for the horse collar tackle. So tack on 15 yards of the gain. It winds up as a 32-yard gain total. It looked like Crawford knocked Pierre Luton a bay on his butt. Another great special teams player. But tough call there on Lynn J. Shell. Here's Volney. Passing out. Shell steps into him. It's a pickup of seven yards in the play. Let's go back and take a look at that tackle by Shell. It was dinged for 15 yards on the horse collar. Well, first of all, it's a great run by Volney, right? Now he's got his left arm right in the back of his jersey there, and he's tugging on it, tugging on it. I think he had the back of his shoulder pads the whole way. Can't take that one back, but Volney doing a nice job of hitting the hole and getting some big yards. 54 yards rushing for Volney in the game. And now he's got it again, trying the right side, and Volney lost the football. Kowalny jumping on it, and was Volney able to get it back? A pileup for the football. And it will be Winnipeg football, as it looked like Greg Carr was able to recover for Winnipeg. Yeah, we've already seen Volney put the ball on the ground twice here. The one time we saw Glenn January recovering the end zone. Here he puts it on the, ball, on the ground again as Willie Powell pulls it out. Looks like Winnipeg's able to recover. Got to get a beat on that because they need you to carry the football and carry it well and not give it back and put it on the ground so often. That's that's a sign for concern right there. Justin Blardy from 39 yards out. He's made six straight and 13 of his last 14. Make that seven straight and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers lead for the first time since the early stages of the opening quarter. As they're now up 17-15 in what's turned into a slugfest in Toronto. Well, pack your bags for the wildest adventure on earth. A new season of the amazing race begins tomorrow at 8, 7 Central on CTV. Well, for the Winnipeg Blue Bombers, a drive that results in a field goal and now the question for La Police is going to be going forward with Buck Pierce. You know, both quarterbacks are going to be question marks in that Winnipeg-Montreal game next week. Anthony Calvillo KO'd last night in Edmondson. Pierce not KO'd, but knocked out of the game here tonight. Yeah, and that's, this is, quarterbacks are marquee players here in this league and very, very valuable. And Alex Brinks, doing a nice job for Winnipeg here tonight. Adrian McPherson for Montreal did a nice job against Edmonton last night in replace of the starters. Got to seize those opportunities, and that's how names are made, careers are had, taking advantage of those opportunities to present themselves. Chad Owens from the eight-yard line. And Owens races up the sidelines and steps out of bounds at the 40. And so the Toronto Argonauts will go to work, and Matt, they have 13 yards on first down here in the second half. Yeah, you want to kick start an offense, put it in number two's hands right there. Get him some touches. Get him some touches. Maney, which all his family and friends call him, coming up from Tennessee. Jermaine Copeland, he may not be as fast as he once was, but he can see a defense and read a defense with the best of them because of his experience. And he's, he can sit down and find those soft spots. I'd lean on Owens and Copeland here. First down from the 37-yard line. It's Chad Owens on the end around, gets away from Odell Willis, and spins out to the 42-yard line for a pickup of four. You know, good play call. I like the fact that they're trying to get him touches, but... It's six, seven yards off the line of scrimmage, and it doesn't look like they have enough people to block on the backside when he breaks contain. So he's got to create some magic just to get get a few yards. Second carry of the year for Chad Owens. Now from the 42, Giles, quarterback draw. Stephen Giles needs the 47-yard line, dives ahead. And he'll be marked down at the 46. Pick up a four yards. That'll bring up third and a yard for Toronto. And that's just closing speed. I like the design. I'm going to fake a bubble screen out to his right. 
going to draw Clint Ken out of there, but Odell Willis' speed really does a nice job of forcing Giles back into Clint Ken, who redirects and puts him down short of the first down. It'll be nearly two yards, so Jim Barker will elect to punt the ninth yeah, kick of the game for Noel Prefontaine as Javon Johnson, who has a touchdown in the game, is ready to receive. And it's a fake. Prefontaine pulls it back and now kicks it, and Javon Johnson catches at the 32-yard line. And he fielded the ball cleanly, which means it's a 15-yard, no yards penalty coming to Toronto. So a 32-yard punt. The net will be 17. More yards. Toronto number 37, 15-yard penalty, first down. And great field position for Winnipeg. Yeah, Prefontaine's going to pull it down, try to make something happen, see if he catches Winnipeg napping. He doesn't. He's got to kick it. Doesn't get much on it. It's short. It draws a 15-yard penalty. First down, Bombers from their own 48-yard line. A minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Toronto is 0-7 this year when trailing after the third quarter. Great. Under pressure. Now throws to the sidelines. And that pass is complete. But to a backup Winnipeg player, that was caught by Michel Pierre Pombriand, a special teams player for the Bombers. So that'll bring up second down. Easy for you to say. I, I couldn't even begin to pronounce that name. But smart play by Alex Brink getting rid of that football, not taking a loss there. And that play will stand with him for the rest of his career as an incomplete. <laughs> but that's a good, smart play there by the backup young quarterback from Washington. Second and ten. Brink fires, and it's caught by Terrence Edwards. Now he's fumbled the football. Scooped up by Jeremy Unerdo. And Unerdo's off and running. He laterals it back to McCullough. Gets a block on the corner. Evan McCullough needs one more block. Here he comes. Up the sidelines. Evan McCullough. Touchdown, Toronto. Wow. Unbelievable. Interception. Lateral. Run back. Touchdown. Well, Evan McCullough came in with interceptions in each of the last two weeks. That's not a pick. But that is a touchdown. Benjamin Unerdle right there. Yeah. Jeremy Unerdle having an active ball game, some good, some bad. That time came up huge with Johnny on the spot. And it just gets crazy after a while. <laughs> Our goal bounce. I'm not sure what the Javon Johnson, Glenn January, Evan McCullough triactor pays for scoring touchdowns this game, but I think it's a lot. That's insane. And Corey Watson, meantime, shaken up, makes his way slowly off the field. So with the World Cup of Rugby in full swing, the Argos go back to their rugby football roots, which originated right here in Ontario. And the point after by Prefontaine is good. And the Argos sees the lead with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. What happened here? Brink's going to make a nice throw and a dig route right over the middle. Edwards stays with the catches in the second time. Powell knocks it out. Unerdle's there, and he turns into a running back right away. And he sees the faster Evan McCullough kicks out to him, blocks Hargraves. And then Big Flemish does a nice job of not getting a clip right there. And then the bear jumps on Evan McCullough's back there, and he barely makes it to the end zone. Crazy, watch it breathe here. <laughs> that is crazy. And that's the first career touchdown for Evan McCullough. Thanks to Jeremy Unerdle. Little, I think he's got a little rugby in a little, maybe a little quarterback there. Look like a little option with his right hand, his off hand. 
And then it was just a posse to the end zone. And the fans here at Rogers Center loving that one. And now the Argos have retaken the lead up by five with 33 seconds to go in the third quarter. One more time, go out there, do it again. Are you going to do that again? <laughs> that, I, that I'd like to see. Who's going to score next? Where's your money going? So that's scored as a reception, fumble, lateral touchdown. Good on you, Gord, for figuring that one out. Beasley now from the 10-yard line. Beasley out to the 27. And after the Bombers will go back to work. In the meantime, another Winnipeg player is shaking up with the play. And that's Volney, the tailback who replaced Fred Reed. So more trouble in the injury department for the Blue Bombers. Fred Reed has already left the game with a knee injury. And now Carl Volney, who in addition to playing tailback, plays on special teams for the Bombers, is shaken up. This is a concern for Paul La Police coming to this ball game in a short week. This time of year, players are already dinged up, Nick sore, tired, bodies aren't recovering as fast. Evidence by here today, this evening, so many people getting injured. Not only exemplifies the physical aspect of the game, just the wear and tear that the long season has on players. Only number 24, right here. Watch him trying to make his block, and he just kind of jams his knee into the ground, and it just buckles on. It just buckles on. So Volney.